Hello and welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast. This is single track session number 125. I am your host, Eric Manning, and we have got a few things to talk about today, as well as a few Ask Trail Manners questions, a couple announcements. Um, we'll try and keep it brief, a little fun, pass your time away if you're out uh, running or just driving on the road. Let's start with uh, our past episode. Podcast number 135 on Tuesday, February 5th. We launched a show with Charlie McKee. Uh, Charlie is relatively new to trail and ultra running, but uh, you wouldn't necessarily know that from her results or if you knew her, but had a great show. Um, talked about how she just got into it just a few years ago and has just gone after it since. Um, kind of that mentality she talks about of just being all in and, uh, Speaks volumes of, from what she's done. Obviously, she has a coach, Hayden Hawks, now, but uh, Charlie has just—I don't know. She, if you listen, if you go back and listen to the podcast, I just really find her approach refreshing and inspiring. Um, and I know sometimes, and I had the conversation with somebody in person. Sometimes on podcasts or interviews or you know blogs or you know whatever, when you learn about people or hear about people. Sometimes you got to, I don't know, personally, if you don't know the person, you take a little bit of what they're saying with a little bit of, okay, is this real? Is this true? Um, and I can, I can honestly say sitting with Charlie, watching her light up, watching her talk, she is the real deal. She absolutely, genuinely in, is in love with trail running. Um, her approach, having fun, not too much pressure, um, so sincere. And uh, it was just super fun to hear her on there, just kind of get a different perspective, as well as, you know, for all the people out there that are aspiring to be trail runners or maybe picking it up a notch or, you know, in distance and time and in whatever, I think her approach is just really refreshing. You know, I mean, you're not always going to have that great day. I know a lot of us chase that. We chase that that day when everything just seems to, to come together. Um, but s those are s really few and far between realistically. And it's all those other runs, it's all those other moments, I think, that truly build the trail runners for who they are. Um, so I'm by embracing those and not letting them get to you or, or say, oh, that's a bummer or oh, whatever, um, by embracing those, I think it just shows a lot. Um, so, Charlie, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, this weekend, um, the next show, we, uh, we the Trail Manners, Eric, I, uh, we'll be up at Rufa, running up for air here in Ogden for Malins. And, boy, I'm, I'm volunteering from like 4 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Then I go and coach a soccer practice in the afternoon, and then I come back at 3, and I'm going to try and do a couple trips up. But somewhere in between all that noise, um, the idea is to try and get a few people on for a podcast, kind of like in the parking lot, in the crappy weather, in the cold, in the snow, um, just talk to some people. So it might be multiple guests. I haven't f dialed it in yet, um, but that's that's kind of the approach for the next show, and we'll see if that that comes through. The problem is sometimes I get caught up in these events where I don't pull the microphone out, right? Because I'm just hanging out, talking to people, enjoying my time. And when it's all said and done, it's like, boy, that would have been fun if I would have podcast there or interviewed somebody here. So um, that's that's the plan anyway. Here in Utah, we just got hit with some more snow, um, which is a uh, good timing if you're a roofer runner, either in uh, Ogden or Salt Lake City. And we needed it, to be honest with you, just especially for the race. It was getting super slushy. Warm weather came in. Rain came in. Made a mess. Um, so now this kind of cleaned things up a little bit, and we're expecting more this week. So I uh, should be in time for kickoff. So if you see me at Rufa, like I said, I'll be doing the runner check-in from like 4 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Say hello. I will uh, most likely have my green trail manners beanie on, but uh, say hello if I don't, if we haven't spoken, if we're not haven't been introduced. Um, you know, please take a moment and introduce yourself. I would like to meet new people, um, and just gives me a chance to thank you. So, if you're listening to the show and you introduce yourself, I would say thank you because I know you're a listener because I just told you to say hello. Right? Does that make sense? It's a little, little circle of podcast life so anyway we are in february and things are going well a lot going on and i want to take a, a quick break here so this will launch on thursday february 7th 
roof a day, which again, I have to have more stuff going on. It's, uh, it's my dog Gunner, the gunboat captain. Um, it's his birthday. He turns four in dog years. And right now he is at the groomer getting his birthday haircut. So all you lady dogs out there, when we're walking this weekend, make sure you sniff his butt and say hello. So happy birthday, Gunner. And now we're going to jump into this. We're going to cover it. Unless you've been under a rock or you're not into social media, which I guess could be a very good thing. Um, I didn't share it just because everybody did. I'm only going to bring it up because, and you'll see here in just a minute, but as many of you have seen, read, heard, seen memes, GIFs, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, there was a incident in Colorado, um, Horse Tooth Mountain. A trail runner um, was attacked by a juvenile cougar slash mountain lion, the four-legged type, and which, again, super sad. Uh, we don't like to hear about animal encounters, even though we're going to do some articles on those, if you have any, um, for the website. But this individual um, walked away, literally. He uh, got jumped by a mountain lion and choked it out. So... Wow, right? Well, I don't know if it was which runner it was. I mean, they didn't mention names, and maybe somebody out there knows who this individual is at some point, and that's really not the, the point of the thing unless, you know, first thing that came to mind was like Chuck Norris. You know, I didn't know if he's a trail runner. The Rock, I think, could have easily done that, um, but I'm not sure he's a trail runner. I think he's got some bad knees. Um, but how crazy is that? So I was talking to my daughter about this, and I was telling her the story, and I and I and if you've listened to the podcast a few times, I've given my how I would handle an attack or I guess ideally handle an attack first obviously is trip who you're with I mean that's that goes without saying you know make sure you're the first one to get away and you're you're running partner slash friend I mean that's just the way it goes sometimes um but then it's a matter of I would always say I would stick I'm right-handed so I'd grab my left hand and go reach inside right I'd give up my arm to save my life. I never thought of trying to put a sleeper hold on it, you know, come off the top rope, throw in a sleeper hold, um, and do it that way. So I don't know if that was premeditated, like you thought about it, if something happened, or it was just in the moment. I'd imagine it's just in the moment, right? I mean, that's just got to be the scariest thing ever. Um, but yeah, I'll post a link just for those that, I don't know, may have not seen it, I guess. Um, and sometimes it gets updated as well, and it just gives you some some clues, some hints, some ideas if that were ever to happen to you, which I absolutely 1 million percent hope it never does. Um, but mountain lions, it talks about how they are rare, um, fewer than 20 fatalities in more than 100 years. Um, since 1990, 16 people have been injured and three people have died in Colorado as a result of mountain lion attacks. So... Now this came from like a you know one of the Denver Post or Denver Channel or or something like that, but um, yeah, it's been all, it's been all over social media. And yesterday, and we'll get to some more of that later. But yesterday, when it kind of broke, it, literally the entire Facebook feed that's all it was with all the runners that I follow, with all the um, pages I follow, um, groups I follow or in whatever. Um, that's all it was. Every time I'd scroll, there's a mountain lion picture, mountain lion picture, mountain lion picture. So it was pretty funny. Got a few personal uh, messages as well, um, which I thought were pretty funny. Um, just saying, oh, you guys are crazy, things like that. So anyway, not beating the dead horse or the dead mountain lion. So rest in peace, mountain lion. I hope, you know, it's not like I'm against cats, right, or animals for sure. Absolutely not. Um, I'm pro-human. Um, sometimes maybe you shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, con- uh, wow. I'm glad, glad the individual walked away and it was okay. So, oh, all right, let's go. Enough of that one. Um, I think, like I said, there's, there's plenty, there's probably about a hundred websites you can visit to check that out. Um, I don't know. Let's get into a little bit of racing. Um, again, there's a lot of races last week. Won't cover a whole lot. Um, some big, bigger ones, Rocky Raccoon, hundred miler, um, down in Huntsville, uh, Texas. And some of those other races were, were going on down there. Um, Another one that was kind of interesting was the Arrowhead 135 mile. There's a lot of photos and pictures just because, you know, it reached 55 below Fahrenheit at times. And this is either a ski race, a bike weight race, or a run. Kind of pick your poison. I guess there were no skier finishers. Uh, runners, there were a very small handful. Uh, there were more bikers that finished, but I guess trail conditions were more ideal based on 
the the snow was getting more packed down. There was a course record set on the bike side. Um, but the running side, and you can do it supported and non-supported, um, which is kind of cool, and you can check out links to that. But that's one that's uh, never intrigued me, honestly. Um, those that have done it or want to do it, um, hats off to you or beanies off to you. Uh, but, yeah, it's not really been the one on my radar. Uh, the one that is on my radar, though, is this coming race uh, this weekend, uh, the Tarawera uh, Ultra Marathon in New Zealand, a place I've absolutely always wanted to go. Looks phenomenal. Looks amazing. Looks all the all the fun little words you can use, um, and they kind of have the whole weekend planned. They have the 160k, which is basically the 100 mile race, and then they've got the 102k, um, which is their their other distance. And I won't get into too many details, but it's kind of cool to see Jeff Browning down there tackling the, the 160k. Um, Grant guys from uh, down under, he is also towing the line there. Um, It'll be interesting to see how Jeff does. He looks super fit, looks ready to roll, and uh, just continuing to add to his 100-mile resume and you know early races for Ultron of the Year for 2019 is what we're in. So there'll be a lot of um, competition there. On the women's side, um, you know, thank goodness, I don't know if you guys saw this last week, I didn't bring it up, but Camille Heron was involved in an auto accident, and her car looked just hamburglered. I mean, it was upside down on its roof pretty messed up she's still uh toeing the line uh, she won the 102k um two years ago down there but she's doing the 160k um and on, on the 102k there's a lot um, amanda basham uh, courtney dewalter um, a lot of other names sally mccray um, some big women's names down there for that race so that should be entertaining and, and interesting to see how that goes on the men's side for the 102k um, ryan sands will be there uh, cody reed and david byrne uh, lots of other names will be there as well. Um, so, yeah, it should be a fun race, but it's always one I like to, to look at because the people that post the photos, so this is a hint to you folks that are down there or have them, make sure you post them because that is just so beautiful down there. And uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to make the journey or the trek um, to go down there and not even necessarily run, which I definitely would want to do, but just uh, be down there So because it's so beautiful. So that's one I'll be eyeballing this week, and I know there's a lot more, like I said, um, across the the globe. Um, but I really, for me, all eyes are going to be on Rufa, um, just because I'll be be there in one way or another. Um, even with a sprained ankle from indoor soccer, what a dope! Yep, I know I shouldn't be doing that. I keep getting warned all the time that I I probably shouldn't do that. Um, now I'm going to ask for a little bit of help from the Trail Manners listeners. So as you know, I've talked about it. I'm going to get back into doing some gear reviews on our YouTube channel. Um, they're not going to be super scripted, super edited. Um, it's just basically getting my hands on products. Most of the products I'm paying for by myself. Um, and I'll get my hands on them. I'll do a review on them for you. Um, I'm not going to cover all the the easy specs, the things you can just find when you click on the product, right? Whether it's you know what is the uh, millimeter drop of this, what is the you know pack made out of, the clothes made out of. I'll give you some just layman terms right because that's what i look for i don't get into too much of the scientific stuff so that's what those are going to be about i've already got some stuff lined up to do some podcasts um and also some gear reviews of some some gear if there's things you're looking uh, for information on i'll do the best i can Uh, otherwise it's just uh things that i'm interested in but i need your help here i need a, a rating system i don't want to be too convoluted or too difficult to follow maybe like a scale right maybe one through five easiest way to do it safest way to do it um, but i don't want to do stars and i years ago we, we were kind of going down this road but i don't want to do something i want to do something fun all right something trail manners-esque if you will so listeners that have followed the show maybe know have some ideas uh, send them my way because uh, i already have some packs lined up i've got some apparel lined up um some other miscellaneous products lined up already to get that started but I want to kick it off and have everything dialed in before we get going and not change as we get halfway down the road. Um, but it's just going to be a simple simple scale, one through five. You get an end um, score. But, yeah, send me some at manners at trailmanners.com or comment on this Facebook post for the single track session uh, 125 because I'd like to get that kicked off. So I'm hoping for a little help from all you folks out there. And okay, so here's the deal. Uh, last week, as you know, I went on this little tangent, maybe, 
on ambassadorships and sponsorships. Okay. I had no idea I would get as much feedback as I got. Um, a lot of messages. Okay. Quite a few. And I appreciate the community out there keeping everything positive, right? No one that came after me and, you know, personally called me an idiot. I know you think that driving down the road sometimes or running down the trail, but I appreciate all the constructive comments, the positive comments, whatever they were, um, keeping it quote unquote real with me. Um, but as you know, last week, if you haven't listened, go back and listen. But last week I talked about the ambassadorships and sponsorships about people truly being an ambassador or sponsor of said company or product, um, instead of wanting to hashtag it or be, you know, have their stuff shared based on, Hey, I'm this sock company or footwear or whatever, um, to give yourself so much more, um, clout or social media cred, but you actually believed in the product. And I, I absolutely know that the ambassadors and the sponsorships, the, the, it's definitely top heavy with true people, right? That's, I'm, I'm a, I understand that part, um, but I did have like three people, and that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Three people brought up um, something else for me to discuss and think about, and so I did. And so this week, um, <laughs> by by votes, Facebook trolling on um, group pages, right? Um, and I know in the past, me and Joel have talked about this a little bit, but. It absolutely drives me bonkers. I've unfollowed groups. I've snoozed groups. Folks, you can snooze people in groups for 30 days um, if you're not sure if you want to unfollow and decide. Um, I do it a lot, and it's awesome. So a little tidbit. But about Facebook trolls, right? I mean, there's so many groups out there now. I mean, I could go on, and I'm not going to name them because I don't want people to think for whatever reason why I'm naming them, but there's just a lot of Facebook groups for running, ultra running, trail running, and general running. There's a lot of clubs, a lot of groups in your area I'm sure that I don't even know about, right? Because there's just so many. But I thought it was interesting um, how people are getting more and more turned off by it because it seems like these groups, I think they start out for the right reasons, right? You want to um, learn more. You want to ask questions. You want to see what people are up to, see what they're using, whatever it might be. But you're seeing an increasing amount of people that leave just asinine comments, whether they're trying to be super funny, which is okay, especially if you know the person, I'm, I'm fine with that. Like I have people that leave me funny comments all the time and I'm totally into it, right? But there's just so many people out there that have legitimate questions and the more they get responses of people just giving them stupid answers like, oh my God, this topic's been on here 50 times, why don't you search for it? Well, you know what? You try and search for something on a on a big, huge group page. It's not easy, right? If you don't like the question, if you don't like, just scroll past it. I mean, that's that's my my opinion, right? So, all the Facebook people that think they're funny. Um, here's one last week. And this is a great timing was great. I won't say where it was, and some of you might have seen it. A guy got a brand new pair of shoes, right? He was super psyched. We see this all the time. People get a pair of shoes, they take a picture of it, they're excited. Why not? This is our this is what we do. Shoe, shoes are the main tool, really, for trail running, right? And that's what we'll talk about running in general. Um, but a guy posted a photo, and he had a his shoes were, let's say they were torn before he even put them on, right? So he posted it, and he's it was basically, you know, more of a comment of, hey, look at this, you know, kind of making a comment about it. So then people started posting, you know, <laughs> guys like, well, that's what you get. Um, that's what you get for not checking before you leave the store. Okay. And the guy kindly replied, well, I bought them online. You know, I wasn't in the store. I bought them online. Another guy called him out and says, well, that's why you don't buy online. I only go in to buy from in person because I don't trust people online. Well, I mean, you can still get a refund, but I guess the point is why make snarky comments? The guy had a question about it. Not that's why you don't do this. People aren't looking for more, I don't know micromanaging people or people to criticize them. I mean, that happens every day, no matter what. If you're a grocery store, people look on your... Don't tell me that, right? You don't tell me you go to a grocery store and someone puts all their food on a conveyor belt, you won't look at all the food. And you're thinking, man, that person eats healthy. Man, that person eats like crap. Or, man, I want to go home with that person and have dinner with them, right? It's the same thing. People don't come to social media. It's a legit question. It's a legit concern. And you can tell when it's not. I mean, again, you you're part of the groups, you know the people, or you know the posts, and you read it, and you're like, okay, it's not true. But if someone says, hey, I'm training for my first 50, hey, I'm, you know, have a, have a question on how much water I should drink, and you're like, oh, why drink water? Don't be a wimp, or, you know, those type of things. I don't understand that, right? 
Um, especially when you know the person's really looking for help. I don't want 50 comments to find two that help me and 48 of them are just, I don't know, kind of lame. And I went back and I thought about it and we don't have that on the trail manners page. We have the fun stuff, right? I mean, we post, but it's not like asking serious questions and people are too snarky or rude. And I think that's what it is. So if you're one of those people, please don't do that. And, and don't discourage people from posting stuff by, you know, leaving rude comments or comments that aren't, that can easily be taken out of context or, Hey, this has been posted. I hate that one. This has been posted 50 times. Go look. Why don't you just keep scrolling? It took you longer to type that than if you just kept scrolling. You don't need part of the conversation. So the people that asked me to address this and they didn't tell me what to address. They just said, Hey, what do you think? Well, this is what I think. So it doesn't happen on the trail manners one. If someone asked a legit question, um, I'm confident people would give them answers. And I know if you're friends, and you can snark each other, right? Because you're friends, you know each other. But if you're not, just let it go, right? Let people feel comfortable asking questions. Even though you've run ultras your whole life, ran on the trails before trail running was invented, some people haven't. And so that's what you need to understand. And if you don't want to read it, don't read it. Let someone else answer it for them, right? Um, and I want to say thank you to all the people that do chime in and give your two cents um, to help people out because that's – very important because we talk about it on the podcast about education, um, you know, helping people educate uh, about trail running or or advocate for it or things like that. Um, the more you come off with this elitism attitude or I'm better than you attitude, it's really a turn off and it really makes the sport look uglier than it is. Um, and it usually is that one or two people um, that do that. So I'm all about positivity. Let's keep it that way. Let's have fun. Um, and, uh, I don't know, let's just help people. I mean, that's why they're there, right? They're not there to get hammered. They get enough of that at work or at home or at the grocery store for that matter, right? So anyway, hope that helps out with my opinion. That's my opinion and, uh, keep them coming. It wasn't an ask trail manners, but it was more, Hey, do you want to bring this up? So curious what other people think. Obviously, um, you can post on our Facebook page after this, but you know, we'd love to hear what our listeners think. And if you've had experiences with that, I mean, it, sometimes it just gets stupid. Um, so, and if people put negative stuff, I will guarantee it's a one and done deal um, for the Trail Matters page. Uh, if you post something negative or attacking or just plain right rude, um, there's a chance you're just not going to be part of the page anymore because, you know what, I'd rather have zero followers than, than those. So, all right, let's move forward. Killed that one. Dead. Kachapoom. Um, do want to bring up again, um, the Ogden trail running festival is coming up May 3rd and 4th. We've got our title sponsors, Solomon and Amr sports factory outlet, along with the Palisades ultra trail series, the putts crew, Ogden trails network gear 30. And once again, McKenzie exhibit is back to sponsor the kids K race. So thank you to all our sponsors and there's still spots available for that as well as to register for the race. We need to grow this race folks. So if you're local, even if you're not, I mean, I still mean it, right? But if you're local, spread the word. Let's get this uh, race signed, registered for the Gib Wallace. We have a couple race distances. It's a fun day. And you, you people know, man, I mean, if you build it, they will come. If they don't come, you got to tear it down, right? So if you don't show up, I don't know how much longer we can do it. But uh, it's a great event. We have a lot of fun. It grows every year. And we're just looking for a, a pretty, pretty stout big year this year. So, um I'll leave a link for that to the Ogden Trail Running Festival. May 3rd and 4th. May 3rd is Friday night at Solomon with Almer Sports, and we haven't announced what we're doing there yet, but that's going to be um, hopefully announced here pretty quick. We're just finalizing uh, information on that. And how about let's cover Strava, and then we're going to get into Woody Footies. So Strava this past week, um, distance was Dan Hawk, 118 miles. Run time, Jonathan French. 26 hours, 59 minutes, and vert. Dan Hawk, 27,000 feet. 27, 233. Big week for Dan. Um, his run time, we'll throw that in there because he earned it. 22, 46 with, with all those. So, uh, And we are 549 members. Big um, on the Trail Manor Strava page. So thanks for everybody for, for doing that. All right, for Woody Footies, it's time to make a, a special announcement, one that I've been excited to say. So as you know, in the past, we, we have sponsors for to make Woody Footy possible. So we can do Woody Footy, 
But we'd like to give you something, right? Just something for free. Nothing that you have to pay for, but just for participating. And we want to grow this bad boy, so make sure you keep posting. Woody Footies is Where Did Your Feet Take You? That's posted every Sunday on our Facebook page. And we pick one winner, one winning picture, and use it for our single track session photo. And also we send them a hat. Um, So we're out of hats for our first run. But we just ordered more, folks, because we do have a sponsor. And... um, I don't have a drum roll, but uh, the sponsor this year, a lot of you are familiar with, good friend of the show, um, great guy, surprise sponsor, but I wanted to say thank you. So for the next year, the next X amount, 50 plus, 60, whatever, how many weeks we end up, or hats we buy in, um, Turtle Miller is sponsoring the Woody Footies, Caldwell Banker in St. George. Turtle is a real estate agent down there, beautiful St. George, so if you're ever in the area and you need a place to buy, right? Not to rent. If you want to buy a place, hook up with Turtle, right? Um, or get with Turtle or tall, call Turtle. Maybe that one works out better. Call Turtle. Reach out. Reach out to Turtle. Um, but Turtle's graciously offered to be the sponsor of the Woody Footy Awards for this year. Such an amazing guy anyway, but uh, absolutely grateful uh, for him to step up and uh, sponsor that. So we have hats ordered. I'm not going to tell you what they're going to look like, what anything until they come out. Um, should be a couple weeks, though, because it does take time to get them in and, and printed and everything else. But, folks, we are back for another year of, of free swag. If you've won before, you're back in the bucket um, because we want to make sure that uh, these hats are limited edition. So thanks, Turtle. If you see Turtle, tell him thanks uh, for being the sponsor for Woody Footies. Um, yeah. And this year's this week's winner, Well, let's, let's announce that, right? This week's winner for Woody Footy goes to Hannah Sons, S-O-N-S. Hannah, congratulations. She posted an absolutely breathtaking photo um, of Sunset Cliffs in San Diego. Now, this is one I immediately was drawn to because I could say, where did my feet take you? I'm like, that's where I want my feet to take me right now. So I closed my eyes, had a little dream. And that was the location that I was. So congratulations to Hannah Sons. Her picture is Sunset Cliffs and beautiful. One of my favorite places to go visit, San Diego, California. So when you see the photo, you'll understand why, but it's it's gorgeous. Um, There's a lot of trails, folks, in San Diego, if you're not aware. Um, So thank you very much for everybody, to everybody, that uh, shared a photo, participated. There are some great ones. Um, Chad Smith, um, Harriman State Park in New York was one. Oh, what was another one? Oh, I really liked uh, Christopher Pax. He took a week off and ate donuts. I said donuts here, um, man after my own heart and gut. Um, Christopher Fell posted one uh, in Germany most likely. He's got a Trill Manners buff. Tim Ruiz had a really beautiful one. Now, some people aren't posting where it's at, so automatically I don't know if he can win going forward. Blake Palmer had one, having some fun on Fernwood Trail. There, Brandon Root again um, is killing it. Muir Woods National Monument uh, and Dipsy. Um, so beautiful stuff. Kate Wolf Collins in Connecticut. So there's a lot of great ones this past week. So thanks for everybody that sent those in. And so real quick, what is wrong with me, right? I mean, that could be a whole, not just show, but segment. I could branch off and start a new podcast, maybe launch it on Wednesdays and Fridays or something. What's wrong with Eric? But no, seriously, so speaking of dream, last night, this is real, okay? This is not fluff. Last night, I had a dream, right? This dream um, kind of combined a few things, and then something super crazy happened. So this is why I'm talking about it. So last night, I had a dream. I was at a race. So we we talked with Charlie McKee on her podcast, and we talked about... Um, running OCC and then kind of the whole vibe at the races over there. One of the things was, you know, these start lines are so packed and you're kind of moving around. So that's how I felt in my dream it was like some weird, I don't even know where I was to be honest with you. <laughs> that's how crazy. And then when I get into a little bit deeper, you'll understand why. So I'm at the start line of this race getting all, you know, feeling antsy, just like I do for a race. They're about ready to kick us off. And I look down and I have a vest on that I'm about ready to do a gear review on. Well, this vest I don't know what I was thinking. I looked down, and it was two soft flasks in the chest pockets, which is normal, right? But I hadn't taken them out of the wrapper yet. So they still had that plastic packaging and that perforation down where the 
you know, the nipple is on there. So they hadn't even been opened. So obviously there's no water in them. So I'm standing at the start line. They're about to kick us off. I've got my brand new vest on, so I'm feeling pretty sweet. Look down, flasks are empty, never crack the seal on them. So I'm starting to panic. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm thinking, okay, where can I hurry and get some water? And before we start, I got to, it was such a huge crowd. It's not like I can just go off to the side, fill up with water. I mean, I'm just, I'm locked in. So then I start to panic. Maybe I can do it. And for some reason, I ended up, it, it was a 50K. I knew that. I'm like, man, I haven't trained enough for 50K to run a whole thing without water. Where's the aid stations? And I remembered, I don't know if there's aid stations because I didn't know what race I was running. So I started to panic. I'm like, well, how am I going to wash down my gels? Then it hit me. I didn't have any nutrition with me. So my vest was basically out of the package on my body. I didn't have anything in it. So that was that was crazy part number one. That's not like me. So then we start, and next thing you know, we're standing still. It's like this conga line, and you're in twos for whatever reason. Maybe because of my coaching soccer, I make mean, my kids warm up in twos. But we're in twos, and we had to take an elevator. What? Right? So, and they only could fit four people on at a time. So, people by me were starting to calculate how long this race was going to take based on our elevator ride. I don't know where we were supposed to go in the elevator, but apparently somewhere where the race starts, but the clock had started. So, I'm panicking, standing in line. I'm like, I can't get out of line to get water, whatever, right? So, I'm next on the elevator. So, I'm waiting for the doors to open. The doors open. (laughs) I step inside, and who's in the elevator? Quiet Riot, the band. And, and I don't know what they look like. All I remember is it was from one of their albums where the guy had some white, uh, like he was in a psych ward, right, with some crazy mask. And someone said, oh, it's Quiet Riot. So that's how I knew it was Quiet Riot. And so I'm freaking out. And I'm in a dream. And I'm panicked. And now I'm in an elevator with Quiet Riot, who I've never heard anything about for years. And I know their songs. I'm old. So I'm freaking out. We get up. I don't know how because it's a dream. I get up. And I get out of the elevator and start running. Well, now I'm running on like a, and this is where I think this Sunset Cliffs picture came in. Because I'm running alongside, I think it's the ocean. So on one, my right side is the ocean. On my left side is like nice old um, beachfront houses. Okay. So I'm running down. <laughs> and a couple nights ago, I went and saw Adam Sandler and Rob Schneider in a comedy concert or tour, whatever they are. So I'm going down, and Adam Sandler hat went and practiced with the Utah Jazz before his thing two days ago. So I'm going down, and I look over in these basketball court, and Adam Sandler's playing basketball with Shaquille O'Neal because he talked about Shaquille in his skit. They wave me over to play hoops with him in the middle of a race. So what do I do? Well, yeah, I go over and play with them. They end up giving me water for my vest, and then I keep running. And then, folks, I woke up. How crazy is that dream? How freaking weird is that? Turn the page. I drive. I wake up, take my daughter to school. I'm driving home. I'm like, well, I'm going to turn on my radio, and I have Sirius XM. I listen to uh, the 70s channel, the 80s channel, and the 90s channel. They're right next to each other. I turn it on. No freaking lie. Quiet Riot was on the radio. For real. I haven't heard Quiet Riot, seen the name, heard any anything about them. I can't tell you how long. I dream about them. Turn my radio on. I didn't change the channel. Just hit on, and boom, Quiet Riot's playing. So, we're, what is up? The world is weird, and I'm losing my damn mind. So anyway, that's my little my little what's wrong with me. And if you are a dream, I don't know what do you call those. If you can read dreams or or the meaning of dreams, I'd love to hear what's wrong with me because that might help me move forward for 2019. All right, let's get to ask trail manners. These are legit now. Okay, so. First one's a good one, and this is what I'd like to see some participation on as well. Um, this comes from a listener, what we're not naming. They asked to be anonymous. So it says, uh, where is it here? Okay, I have a question for you. Uh, it's from a, a woman, okay? Um, what uh, What is the first thought that goes through your mind when you come up to or cross paths with a solitary female runner on the trail? No friends, no dog, no one but her. And then it says, I ask because I run alone a lot on the trails and I've had mostly three types of responses from men on the trail. Number one, averted gaze, no eye contact, move away as quickly as possible. I assume I assume this is to appear non-threatening. Number two, the usual nod, wave, thumbs up, and keep on running. And then three, the stop and chat. Okay. 
This is just what men do, but I want to know what they think and think is capitalized. So, wow, that's a deep one, right? So I responded via email to this person just to make sure, you know, I was on the same page. And honestly, again, without uh, whatever, I'm probably the most uncomfortable person on the trail when it comes to a solitary female runner period on the in the history of the world on the planet right <laughs> and i've said some stories when i've come across like lucy bartholomew and she was with somebody i made a total idiot of myself um but i'm the worst right so i don't know why this is and maybe it's because i want to make sure but i think the non-threatening thing i try to make sure i'm like the non-creeper thing so i go out of my way to Number one, move off the side, right, if there's room, and just let them pass. I don't really make a lot of eye contact. Um, most likely, I will say, morning, how you doing? That's about it, right? So that's kind of how I act. I just want to th- definitely be non-threatening. If I come up behind a solitary female runner, that's where it gets even more uncomfortable because I try and make noise without startling the runner, right? Um, but I, I can see all three. Like, I would have no problem... Sometimes you can read a runner. Sometimes when they're coming at you and they kind of look at you and their head goes straight down, it's like, hey, that person doesn't want to communicate in any way, shape, or form. Totally fine with that. Everybody's different. So sometimes I won't even say anything. Rarely, if I don't know a person, I would stop and chat. In fact, that would pretty much be if they, I would never instigate a conversation. Unless it was like, hey, there's a mountain lion down the trail or a rattlesnake or some guy in the bushes wearing a Speedo. You know, I might stop them and let them know. But otherwise, I don't I don't communicate unless I know the person. So that would be my third one. But the question she had, which I thought was interesting, is what do you think? And I think for me, in my head, I am thinking, don't trip, <laughs> don't scare them, and don't come across as a creeper, right? Um, because I, I do hear, and I have friends, and I know women's a lot of women's concerns on the trail. And on the flip side, I don't want to portray this creepy dude, right? So I'm interested to hear what other guys think um, just for that for that, that trail manners question. Um, so I really fall into all three, but I don't I don't really talk, right? Unless you talk to me first or I know you. That's just not my, my thing because I'm the most uncomfortable person. So it would be interesting to see what, not necessarily what other people do or other guys do, but what they think. So I replied back and, and we had this little conversation, but I'm, and maybe they want to hear as well. So post on this, seriously, on this single track session, uh, 125 for our Facebook post. That might help this person. I know they follow us on social media. Just give them an idea what they think. Because hers is, you know, she, she chats with people. Um, she thinks connecting is important, which I absolutely do. I think if you're in the mountains, you got a lot in common. Um, not to say that people aren't, you know, rude or jerks or anybody about that, but... Um, it's just the whole how you doing thing on the trail. It's the thinking part. So anyway, good. It's a great question, but it made me think more about. I hope I don't come across as A B C D whatever. Um, but if you don't know me on the trail, um, most of the time I think people say, might say hi first. If I think right, I must always try to be the least uncomfortable and end up making things the most uncomfortable. So that's just my my style. All right, so hope that helps, um, and hope other people can comment on that. Next one, um, really good question here, and this is a hard one to be honest with you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna answer it, and then if anybody wants to chime in on Facebook, please do. That's what we're here for, right? And again, not like I talked earlier. Let's let's give some constructive stuff. So, hey there, I signed up for my first 50k on March 9th, which is my for the record, this is me talking, Eric. That's my daughter's um, 14th birthday. So March 9th is special. Anyway, um, it has 6,000 feet of elevation game on a 50K. Um, I found plenty of solid information on training in terms of mileage, but nothing about elevation training. What is a reasonable elevation gain goal to hit on my final training runs? So far... The most I've gained in a single run, so 22-mile run, 2,400 feet. I also get between 600 and 900 feet on one midweek run each week. I'm a middle-of-the-pack trail runner 
So I'm not necessarily looking for speed, but looking to avoid jelly legs in the final 10 miles. Thanks for your podcast. Love it, Lisa. So, Lisa, fantastic question. Um, I'm a middle of the pack runner, right? So it's not like I'm a coach, which I would never be on any form other than soccer. Um, I think a lot of this really does depend on the runner, right? Because you could come out and say, um, what's a reasonable elevation gain goal to hit on my final training runs? Well, I think for me, it's like, what do you mean final training runs? And where are you? Have you built up a pretty good elevation base? Um, you, you know, you've gained 2,400 feet on a 20, uh, 22-mile run. So here where I'm at, um, we have a two-mile run that you gain 2,000 feet. Um, that's obviously pretty stout. So 50K, so 32-ish miles, 6,000 feet a gain. Uh, it's not bad, right? I mean, again, depends on where you're from. Some place like that's a, that's a ton of elevation. Some place like, oh, that's not much. Depends on where you live or what you're into. I would personally say, again, regardless of how well you want to perform, it's not going to hurt you to get more than you even think. Right. I mean, it's not like you're trying to train just to get by necessarily. So a training run, um, the more elevation you can get, I think is better. Right. Um, because really that's where it's going to get to you because you're probably a good runner. Right. I mean, you've done 22 mile runs, you're doing a 50 K. So it's not probably necessarily the distance, the leg turnover and you're a mid pack runner. So I'm not sure like time or speeds that big an issue for you. I'm sure you have goals. But far as, I don't know, I think that's a tough one. So um, for me, okay, let's say this is me. I'm doing a 50K, um, uh, 6,000 feet of elevation gain. I, I don't know. I mean, everybody's different. I mean, you see some people getting 20,000 feet a week. Now, for this race, obviously, that isn't not something you would probably say you necessarily need. But I wouldn't go less than 10, right, for the week. Um especially if you can get, you know, 600 to 900 on one midweek run each week. I don't know how long that distance is. Um, I don't know, maybe hit that 900 foot mark on that run. Um, maybe do it twice to hit 1800 feet. I mean, you want to get at least a couple runs with some decent vert on one run. So that 22 miles with 2400 feet that's not a lot of gain for that distance that I'm used to, right? Especially even in your race where it's only 10 miles more for your race, but you're going to be gaining, you know, almost four, you know, 3,500 more feet. So you're over doubling that. Um, so I would, whatever that 2,400, if it's that 2,400 foot and that 22 mile run, if it's got a pretty significant section of some elevation gain, maybe hit it a few times, you know, where you can get, you know, 8,000 foot a week maybe to feel comfortable. But again, the more you do, the better you're going to feel. Like you could probably get by. It's not like 6,000 feet are is two climbs, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's kind of over the course of the race. So I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a tough one without knowing how the vert is. Are they long climbs? Are they just rollers? Um, Because it's kind of training differently. If it's kind of just a lot of rollers or small climbs and try and train on similar trails that kind of offer the same thing. If it's like steeper climbs, like maybe there's a 2000 foot climb at one point in there, then I would absolutely do, you know, climb similar to that just to know what it takes. Um, the grade makes a difference. So I think there's a lot of variables. So it's not just about the vert, but the type of vert, whether, like I said, the rollers or steep stuff, but I don't know, shoot for, what you're comfortable with, 8,000 feet, maybe. Um, but again, the final training days, I don't know what that means, like how close to the race. But we taper up here, so um, a lot depends on... At least if you have some specifics, I would be more than happy to answer those via email too. But if anybody else has some comments out there and maybe knows, um, you know, post something there. But a lot just does depend on the type of gain you're going to be receiving over the course, whether it's rollers or some significant climbs. Sometimes you'll see climbs where it's a race and it's like, oh, I got a, you know, two, 3,000 foot climb coming up. So that you're going to train differently for that than if it's a whole bunch of 
500 foot climbs potentially. Um, but the more vert you can get, obviously the better, um, because that's just going to make you stronger anyway. So hope that helps, but definitely email me if you have some other specific questions. Um, but again, appreciate the questions. Keep them coming on the Ask Trail Manor stuff and we'll keep answering the best we can. And also hopefully people chime in to help out a little bit. All right. Um, I think that's really it. We do, uh, we have 17 Patreon supporters. That's up from 14 last week. So we gained three over the week. And, uh, Preston, Paul, and Mike, thank you so much. Um, again, absolutely appreciate you joining it. Um, especially the others that are involved, the 14 before. So we're up to 17. I'd sure like to see that number grow, folks. If there's anything you can do to help out via Patreon at, uh, patreon.com backslash trail manners to help us keep things going as little as two bucks a month. Um, which again, hopefully isn't much. Um, yeah, any, any little bit helps, uh, keeps us going. We're getting to where we can kind of be more self-sustaining, um, and also be able to do a few other things that we want to do in the future. But thank you so much for the support. And even if you're not a Patreon supporter, thank you for your support. Truly mean that. Um, yeah, much appreciated. Anyway, hope everybody has a great week. Stay safe out there. Um, keep that training going, whether you're building a base or peaking for a race or maybe just on a little R&R because you got big stuff coming up. Uh, have a great week. If you're running races, good luck. Remember to have fun and enjoy the journey. Thank you again for listening to the Trail Manners podcast. This is Eric Manning, and I am out.